Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to draw a cardinal bird. So grab your pencils and let's get drawing. Uh, the first thing you need to note is that we're going to draw the face of the bird, of the cardinal, and we'll just try to draw a quick outline. So probably something like this, and you just generally have some feathers up here at the top of the head. Um, the bird beak will usually be right around here, and it's a short beak, so something something like this, and you'll typically have the eye probably right around here. We'll make this a bit darker just so this could be visually seen. And then of course down below you have, um, the bird will go like that. So that's basically gonna be the outline of the bird. Um, now let's get this going a little better. So. What I'm not showing you here is actually the area that's gonna be the dark feathers, and that is just around the bird beak. So over here and back to the eye. So over here and then around the eye. So my method of doing this is just be very light and kind of forgiving because you're probably gonna to wanna to, you know, adjust this as you need to. So around the eye and then down, and then as you go down, it kind of goes like this. So. In this whole area, you're gonna be dark with the feathers. And my method of doing the feather feathering is just kind of like this. So uh, let me sharpen this up real quick as well. So if you're not aware, the cardinal bird is most well known for just having a nice bright red uh, feather and a very bright red coat of feathers. So very easy to spot and just generally very, very um, uh, memorable. You know, everyone can kind of, most people can kind of know and see what that cardinal bird looks like. So definitely easy to note. Um, they also, people say that cardinals are usually the first ones to the bird feeder, feeders and uh, also the last ones to the bird feeders. So they probably, they say that they do that for protection, I guess, um, just to keep them safe and perhaps from a, predatory they're trying to you know stay safe in a predatory way so um, that's a common fact about cardinals as well I'll give you some more facts as we draw some more so I think down here what you want to do is maybe just pick a lighter pencil because down here this is all red right so um, although this drawing will be in black and white we'll basically try to just let you know that down here is going to be the red part of the bird right so we do a lot of black and white drawings. Maybe in the future we'll change that. But for now, we basically keep that. The bird beak, I think we're just going to erase and redraw because I drew the outline nice and dark so you can see it right off the bat. But um, typically, I wouldn't start that dark. So let's just erase and even shorten the beak just a bit. I'll tell you why the bird beak is so short in a minute, but um, we'll, go, we'll go just a little bit lower. We'll go here and we'll go back down like that so kind of kind of like that um, from here what you can do is go back up and get a real curve on it um, the cardinal bird beak is actually really short and really not um, not something that is very long at all so um, just be aware of that as well so they actually have a diet that consists of seeds. Um, the, 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 the bird beak itself is actually very stout and short and very um, pointy. And they basically say, um, crack open, crack to crack open the hulls of nuts and shells and really just get at it. So if you notice this right here is actually, um, and I'm purposely making this little jaggedy that is, you know, for the most part, how we want to draw this bird beak here. And I want to go back just a little bit more. You kind of want to go back into the, the black part of this, right? Over here, you're going to have some, oh, let's switch up pencils again. Over here, you're going to have some fur. The fur kind of goes, you know, in and around the, the beak. Um, there's no real perfect way to do this. You can kind of just start to draw uh, around there. But at the bottom of the beak, you're not going to draw the feathering because the feathering would exist below that beak. So just keep that in mind. Um, up and around here, you might have some feathering as well. And 
to make this look as realistic as possible, what you can do is try to create just a bit of curvature on this. So you might want to um, just get a bit of a roundness to that, right? And even over here, the feathering goes bit back around the, the back part of the beak. So if the beak is here, you might have a bit of feathering that exists over here. Um, this is all black feathering. So what I'm drawing right here is the black part of the feathering. And it typically kind of just goes like a lot of birds just kind of away from the front of the bird. Um, so just keep that in mind. So we're starting to put this together. Um, what I would say is let's get the eye drawn just a little bit better. And I think to do that, what we'll do is we'll get a nice dark, we'll switch up the pencils and just get a real dark circle in the middle. Real, real dark circle. Okay, right in the center. And then surrounding it, you're gonna have just the ever bit of just a lighter pencil around it like this. Kind of try to go from the inside to the outside and as you work your way around. And then what we can do is just get that 7B again and just do another circle around the outside. That's my best suggestion to draw, you know, a pretty realistic bird's eye. Um, if you look at any photo of a cardinal, it actually does look just like that anyway. So I would definitely say that's a great way to make that look realistic. So we're going to get the dark feathering just around this area here. And in a minute or in a bit, we'll use a darker pencil to fill this in. In terms of the bird beak itself, what you might want to do is just get some curvature lines going. So this is, as you probably know from other drawings, this is my way to get some nice curvature lines on this piece, on this art piece. And you can kind of go up and away, up and away, up and away. And I would definitely use your smudge technique, whichever technique that you like, to just like let these bleed onto the beak. You want the beak to look as realistic as possible, right? So basically just repeat that process. Just try to get some more pencil strokes down below and just try to get them up and away and just keep repeating that, okay? The reason we do this is because it really helps make this bird beak look, you know, as realistic as possible. So just keeping this going and keeping this, this shading process going will help your drawing look even more realistic. So that's what we're trying to do here, right? Okay, so we're gonna smudge this out. until we're really happy with the results. So just keep that going. Of course, you're gonna use your eraser if you're ever not happy with that or if you feel like it's just not working for you. So add in some darker tones as well. You can add just the ever bit of darker tones right down at the side, right, right over there. Great, so that's kind of a nice way to get this bird beak looking really sharp and spot on. Now we're gonna work on the bottom as well. The bottom is gonna be just a little bit different in the sense that we're just gonna have some darker pieces right over here. And then we'll use back our regular pencil to really just, just get some of these textures going this way as well. somewhat of a cross hatching pattern just to fill in the beak itself, okay? I wanna use my eraser to clean this up. And in doing so, I actually wanna get rid of just a bit of the curvature of this beak. Um, I'd like to really straighten this out just a touch, touch, just a tiny bit, if you will. So in doing so, what I'm gonna do is just bring this down just the tiniest little bit over here. And I'll just use my eraser to clean up just some of this extra pencil that is left over. I think that's going to look a little more realistic. So, and you know, there's nothing wrong with just making corrections as you go through your drawings as well. You can even see I'm just adding a little more pencil up here as well. And the reason I'm doing that is just to make this look um, realistic, right? That's what we're doing here. Okay. 
so it's coming along. Um, the bottom of the bird beak, you might want to just be darker at the bottom. It's underneath the, you know, the face and it's underneath the beak. You might be darker underneath just from natural light sources that would appear. So therefore I'm just getting some darker tones at the bottom. Okay. I might switch over to something like an 8B and just get a few, just a few lines down below. Right? That's all we're really doing is just adding some shading down there. Okay, now that we have the 8B, what we can do is just start to put on some of the darker tones as well. And this part is kind of fun because you're just really going like this. You're just kind of getting some of these feathering lines. Let's sharpen this up quickly. The tricky part is right underneath the beak. You don't want to touch the beak, right? You want to keep that beak on top of these feathers. So if you're going to do that, um, you have to be very careful at that spot, right? While I do that, I'll tell you that um, in terms of mating, the red cardinal actually um, would take, I think, seeds and, and feed from mouth to mouth into its mate's uh, mouth the seeds so that's kind of a mating thing that's done um, it's really interesting and I'm not a bird watcher myself but the males basically feed the um, the females the seeds right that's basically what happens there so really interesting another fact is that um, very rarely the pigment of the cardinal the red cardinal actually doesn't show the red doesn't show and the bird actually becomes a yellow cardinal and I think there's a name for it I think the name is uh, I had it over here somewhere um, you know I'll look it up afterward but uh, it results in a yellow cardinal so believe it or not there's actually yellow cardinals out there that exist and from what I know it's a very big deal if a bird watcher goes out and actually sees um, a yellow cardinal so um, keep that in mind if you ever see a yellow bird out there um, I know that there's other yellow birds, but it could possibly be a yellow cardinal, believe it or not. So the yellow cardinal does exist, and it's really interesting to you know, know that it's out there as well. I actually just saw a yellow bird the other day, and I thought it was something different. I thought it was a different bird, but now that I think about it, it actually could have been a cardinal, right? could have been a yellow cardinal. Um, I'm in North America, so I think that's the climate of that bird, if I'm not mistaken. So we're just getting the darker feathering done on this bird and we're just going to keep this moving around and we're really just going to keep this nice and dark. You really want to be dark. You really want to get um, a lot of those dark tones right in there, right, right around the eye. So let's keep this going. I'm going to try not to put my head right on in front of the camera, but uh, this is what I'm doing here. Around the eye, there's really not much um, light shading. It should be dark right around the eye. If you want, you can leave just the tiniest little bit, just the tiniest little bit around the eye, just to show that the eye is like, there's a bit of separation to the feathers, but really that eye could be just like that. So what you do is just quickly like finish this up and just kind of get some of these featherings done. And then I would maybe switch up to something like a 3B or a 5B and uh, just add in some lighter pencil strokes just in and around there where, you, where you'd like. Um, actually, I think the 5B is a bit better. So if you want, you can even just get down over here, just get a few more lighter pencil strokes in there as well. Okay. And if you want, just switch it up as you wish. I'm just adding more darker tones. And I think one of the best things you can do is just fill this in as dark as possible. Just really get a lot, a lot, a lot of this dark 
pencil shading in this dark area because if you look at any kind of picture of a real cardinal they do they do actually have that exactly that so uh it's quite nice to try to mimic that as much as possible So what we'll do is we will, um, first of all, just look at the, the beak and just make sure that we're happy with it. I think what we can do is just darken up some of this as well. I'm using a 5B to do that. So just darkening this up just a tiny bit more will make me feel better about this drawing as well. Yeah, that's, that's definitely something more that I'd like to see. And... Uh, what I might also do is just, just get some shading this way and darken up this zone right here. So right here is where I'd like to darken this up. And I might even just switch over to a 7B, yeah. And just add in a couple, a couple shading lines just over here. Notice what that did, just getting that dark line right there. It actually more so pronounces where that opening of the bird beak sits, which is obviously right in the middle. And by doing so, it just makes that look even more realistic. That 7B looks so good, I'm actually just gonna use it down at the bottom as well. And I think what I might do is just get it just down here, just to darken this up just a little bit more. So when drawing birds, you might find yourself kind of going back to the bird beak, you might go back to the feathering and there's nothing wrong with that as well. If you need to go back and just adjust and pivot, there's there's nothing wrong with doing that just to make sure your drawing turns out um, as good as possible, right? So, yep, I'm pretty good with that. Let's just darken this up just, you know, underneath the beak, there's definitely gonna be more darkness, right? Because that's where you're gonna have probably a little less light on the side. So what we'll do is we'll maybe switch over to something like an H and we'll just do the top. Um, in order to do the top, this is gonna be red, so, um, but a black and white drawing. So just get these lines going like this. And I know we did another bird drawing as well um, before this one. And if you remember that one, you're really just going, you're just hitting it, right? You're just going like this. And that's my best way to suggest that you draw some feathering on a bird is just um, densely populate the space that you want and kind of away from the beak. Away from the beak will really um, realistically allow you to draw feathers because birds are flying around a lot and they're aerodynamic so um, this process that I'm doing right here is just going from the bird beak away and that is how realistically you can draw feathers because feathers are really um, in real life they're really just going away from the beak because Birds are flying around all the time, right? That's all they're doing. So that's it, we're keeping this going. We're, we're going lightly and then we'll fill it in even darker as well. What I'll probably do is switch pencil types as well, but for now I'm just trying to, you know, at a good pace, just try to get all this feathering done, if you, if you will. The top is tricky because the top of the cardinal has this kind of area like this, so you might find yourself trying to get to this point right over here and the point might come down and then you might have another secondary point and you might have a couple of other points over here. Um, I would say that you wanna have an outer point here and then kind of work your way back down. So your, your points might kind of come back down like this and that's my best suggestion to draw like the head or the top of the um, cardinal as well. Use a slight smudge, don't overdo it, but just use a slight smudge to kind of get that going. Um, what else can I tell you? Over here, you might find just around this point that it's, well, let's switch pencils. Over here, there might be a bit of a ridge. This is just in this specific um, example of a bird that I'm drawing, but it's not necessarily all cardinals. I'm just trying to be more original and creative with this drawing. So. There might be a darker ridge right over here, and there might even be like a bit of a darker ridge just below there as well. Um, the great thing is that you can draw these ridges to help you create like a sense of 3D effect. So if this kind of, you know, 
like that, you're kind of creating this like roundness effect, right? So if we get those two spots on, what I could do is probably go back to my H pencil and, um, and just kind of work my way through all these featherings over here. So while I do that, I'll give you some more facts. I think you guys like the facts, right? Um, so cardinals actually have an approximate lifespan of only three years. Um, I guess that's pretty average for, um, for birds and their lifespans and things like that, but three years. They actually face a lot of hazards, believe it or not. Um, and that's, that's due to, that's like re the reason that a, the cardinal only lives about three years. So um, predators is the main one. I would guess that it's like the color of the feather that causes a lot of predatory issues. Anything that's bright um, will naturally be more um, visible to predators. So the cardinal probably has more predators in the sense that it's easy to spot and easy to see, and you can probably uh, get picked off by predators as well. There's also other things like disease, accidents, starvation. I'm not really sure about the facts around that, but I know that uh, there's certainly issues that can come up from that. So three years is basically the average lifespan of the cardinal, the red cardinal. They say that the longest cardinal has actually lived um, 15 years. So 15 years is the longest um, lifespan noted on the cardinal as well. Around the eye, around the black part of the eye, you might want to just get some of these going back this other way because down here, you're really just getting a lot of this happening in this way. So, um, because this is up and this is back. Think of this like the back of the bird, like actually like the back of a person. And this is like the hair of the person, of the bird, so. And the other thing is around the face, you have a lot shorter um, strokes in terms of drawing the feathers. Down back over here, they're definitely longer. So you might want to um, just accentuate some of the length of the stroke at the back and you could pair it up with some shorter strokes afterward. But for now, we'll just keep these longer. So really interesting to kind of do that. The Cardinal is also the uh, well-known mascot for the St. Louis Cardinals, which is a uh, baseball team in the Major League Baseball series, the MLB. I know as a kid I used to watch baseball and it's like, yeah, the Cardinals, the Cardinals. So um, I probably was really into the Cardinals and I knew about them because my team was the Blue Jays. So it was almost like the birds versus the birds. So you have the Blue Jays, you have the Cardinals, and I think there's might be some others as well. But uh, I have to look that up. I'm, I'm so focused on this drawing right now. So. But yeah, um, St. Louis Cardinals is the, the team name, right? So Down around this belly part of the drawing, um, you definitely want to have some more shading. So you might actually have some darker tones that exist around here. And we'll change pencil type shortly just to maybe give it a little more um, darkness as well. But for now, we'll keep it like that. I probably won't draw this far down. I probably will keep it just over here. So what we'll do is we'll just keep this shading moving over here. And I know it's a little tedious and it takes some time and stuff like that. So hopefully you're you're following along. Um, as usual, I, I always try to ask like, are you drawing along? If you are, let us know. Maybe that you're like going through this as a tutorial and maybe you're pausing as you go along or you wanna catch up. Um, no problem at all. Please let us know how you're doing. That's something that we like to know as well. Um, please let us know, you know, is this something you're working on for a project? Um, is it a school project? Is it just a personal project? Whatever it is, we'd be really curious to know. Um, nothing wrong with using your smudge technique at that point as well. What you can do is you can actually, um, um, you can smudge things out and just kind of redraw some of these feather lines as well. So that's what I'm doing right here. And in a second, I'm actually gonna draw a bigger part of the feather as well, actually connecting to the wing. So that'll be really interesting as well. I think in the past we did a blue jay, just the bird beak and the eyes and stuff. We didn't do any wings, so I think we might just try to put on a bit of a wing thing over here. So as, as these over here, so right around here, these do sometimes just get a little bit longer. 
and almost like protrude back. So you might actually find some lines like this. Um, I know it's really tough because you don't want it to stand out too, too much, but um, some of these lines might look a lot better if you just add in some lines like that. And I'm a fan of like switching up the pencil types as well. It just creates for like a nicer, um, more accurate, finer, and realistic kind of type of shading as well. So over here, uh, what I would say is you might actually just get some pieces just like this. And if you do, um, just drawing them like this is a nice way to kind of show, this is like the wing, right? I guess this is just the front part of the wing. The wing would probably extend right back. I'm not gonna draw the whole bird. Um, I feel like it might just take a little too long. So what I might do is just go right to this point here and, uh, and I guess just follow through with like some of these little feather lines as well. So it takes a bit of time. I could give you some more facts in the meantime and we can go from there. I think I mentioned the St. Louis, St. Louis Cardinals is the most common um, well-known team, sports team for the Red Cardinal, but I think the Arizona Cardinals NFL team. So um, I'm not as much of a uh, NFL football fan as I am with other sports, but uh, that's right, the NFL um, Arizona Cardinals is a very, very popular team as well. And uh, more of a Jets fan, actually. But uh, Arizona Cardinals, the Cardinal really, the Cardinal has really made its mark in the sports world. I'm not sure if it's just the reason that it just stands out so much. It's such an easy bird to, you know, ride along and get on board with. It's probably a very, very well-known bird. We'll try to just fix up some of these little feathers over here as well. And very lightly get some of these um, smudge, the smudging done as well. There's a lot of white space in this area. I would probably suggest if you're experiencing that as well to clean that up. So in order to do that over here, you might wanna just keep some of these lines going. And that means just re-accentuating them, accentuating them, just just keep, uh, keep applying them. You might feel also that just above the eye, you could go a bit darker as compared to the front. And if you did do that, um, it might give the effect of just a little more shading, right? You naturally just generally, depending on where your light source is from, maybe over here, you might have a lighter side over here and darker on the side. If you're deciding to do that, it might benefit you. You could decide, but you can grab your 5B and you can add some darker tones in here as well, just on the side, right? So I'm, I'm using my 5B at this point and I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just adding some darker to tones and shades to the side of the bird. Um, and that's really what I'm gonna do. I also noticed that there looks a bit flat um, it's a bit tough because it's not flat and you don't want it to look flat. So you might actually benefit from just getting some of these, some of these lines just in a different way. So, um, I just wanted to correct that. Not that there was something wrong with that. It just looked like, it looked like a bit of a flat line and I just didn't really want that to, to be the case. It does look nice and realistic if you can get maybe some of these black, dark areas just just hitting into the lighter. It actually might look like real feathers just kind of going over. Even though in real life, you might not even see that every time, but it's just like, for the purpose of this drawing, it, I find that it does look a little more realistic if you can kind of get them looking that way. So um, that's what I'm just doing there. Clean this up over here. Make sure that you don't have like the page, the white page isn't showing down below, right? You don't want it to show. Actually, you don't want it to show anywhere in this whole, like, this, this dark area. You really don't want it to show at all. So push down, press down, like, get this dark area really, really dark. I think it'll look a lot better. Okay. Your 5B is over here. And we're just going to keep trying to get this looking 3D as possible. And... We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. So... So 
So I think I mentioned um, there was the two sports teams, Arizona Cardinals as well as um, St. Louis Cardinals, baseball and uh, football. But there's actually a lot of colleges um, that use the, the Cardinal as well. And they are um, Ball State. This is in no the North America slash um, United States, but that's Ball State University, uh, Con Concordia University. Um, Concordia, I guess, I think it's in Montreal, which is in Canada, I believe. So uh, Concordia, Lamar University. I'm not sure where Lamar is, but uh, it's out there. Um, the University of Louisville and um, Wesleyan University. Those are all the people, like all the schools at the college level that use um, that use the Cardinal as a mascot. So really interesting. I, I mean, I knew that it was used in different sports and things like that, but um, to see that many in that level of usage is, is quite something. So kind of cool. Over here, I have a lot of white space. I want to fix that up. I don't want that white space just sitting there. It's not really working for me. Um, I want to get this drawn. I also found that the top was a bit too light, so I want to darken this up as well. That darker, that darkening that I just did is really gonna make this look a lot more realistic. A lot more realistic, so um, that's why I did that as well. Okay, so we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, I might wanna just keep feathering and keep getting some of these lines down as well. Switch it up. You can try a different pencil type as well. This sharpened H really gives a nice fine line. And if you are looking for that in your drawing, you can maybe use a nice sharp pencil. It's more so about the sharpness of the pencil than it is the pencil type in some cases. So notice right now I'm getting some nice detailed feathering done because before I used my smudge technique to really just get rid of the white page showing. But at this moment, what I'm doing is using this nice fine and sharpened pencil to really just continue, 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 just um, laying down the foundation of nice uh, feather lines, right? These feather lines that are gonna be here, so. If you're wondering what um, what a what a red cardinal sounds like when they chirp or they cheer, it's actually it's a very well known fact that uh, a red cardinal when they're chirping sounds like they're saying birdie 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 or cheer cheer cheer. If you ever hear a bird that's like chee 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 or like cheer cheer cheer, that's typically a red cardinal that's doing that. So um, we probably hear more birds than we see the birds, right? You probably you probably hear them a lot more often because you may not see them, but you might hear them. So if you ever hear that, like, cheer, 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 or like they say, birdie, 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 um, that's a red cardinal. So very distinctive in terms of the sound that they make as well. So really, really good to know that if you ever hear a bird. I mean, I'm not sure if the the, the red cardinal is, is um, I know it's very prominent in northern North America. I'm not sure if it's in all parts of the world or not, but uh, we'll see if I can look up that fact while I do some drawing, I'm kind of multitasking here. But uh, I guess my point of bringing that up was like, why don't you let me know in the comments below, like, do you have the red cardinal in your part of the world where you are? Do you see them? Um, do you not see them? Like, I'd be really curious to know about your experience with red cardinals. I know that as a kid, I used to see them all the time. And I'm in North America, so. Um, 
I would say that's definitely something that I always found really interesting is that that red, red bird, right? So I'm just gonna clean this up, but probably won't continue this drawing past this point. And what I might do to make this just look a look, uh, look, sorry, look a little more realistic is just cut the bottom part of this, right? I feel like that might look a little more realistic as well. Um, it's funny how just removing a bit, maybe parts that have run deep or run long, sometimes if you remove that, the drawing actually looks a lot more realistic. So um, I'm just gonna clean this up and even, even around the beak, yeah, I find that if I can just clean this up just a tiny bit, um, the beak might actually look a lot more realistic as well. So I know I did some erasing on the beak earlier too, so you don't want that to like carry forward. If it does, you can just re redraw that as well. So I would say I'm pretty happy with that. That's basically the drawing of a red cardinal in each step-by-step -step action that we took. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.